And hello, my creeplings. I've got a new one, like as in released this year and just made it to DVD because I missed it in the theaters. It did look cute though, so I definitely uh, made a plan to get a hold of it when I could. We're, I watched Lisa Frankenstein from 2024. Um, I have done a, a watch of Jennifer's body in the past, and there's going to be a lot of contrast and compare between that one because this was also written by Diablo Cody. Um, and it's claimed to be set in the same universe as Jennifer's body. So, in theory, we could have a crossover sometime, maybe. I don't know how I would feel about that. But we'll just jump into this. The cast list on this one is not a lot of people that I am aware of. There are a handful of them. So, I'll just go through it. Um, Catherine Newton plays our our protagonist Lisa I am mostly aware of her from I believe it she played I cannot remember what Castiel's human body's name Jimmy she played Jimmy Novak's daughter Claire I loved her in that so I knew I was in for a treat with this one uh, one of the Sprouse twins from all you millennials remember Zach and Cody's sweet life and all that. So Cole Sprouse, I'm not very familiar with anything else. One of, I can't remember if Cole stayed in acting and he did this and he's Jughead in Riverdale or if that was the other Dylan, I believe his name is, was Jughead in Riverdale. When, when there's actor twins like this. I get confused. Don't get me started on the 90s twins, Jeremy and Jason London, because I I couldn't tell you who was who, who did what movie half the time. The curse of being a twin, I guess, and both being very successful and both being, you know, uh, able to work. Um, and then the only other name that I recognized in this is Carla Gugino, whom I also love. Um, she will probably show up in reviews for other movies in the future. Um, I have loved her since Son-in-Law. Yes, I'm a 90s, you know, I was a 90s teen, tween teen, since I was born in 1980. I was 10 when the 90s rolled around, and Polly Shore was, yes, the poo. And we all went and watched Son-in-Law. We all loved it. And to this day, I still love that. It's one of my favorite comedies. I know, I know, razz me in the comments, guys, but I am a child of a certain generation, and Polly Shore was one of those parts of my generation. Um, so quick breakdown directed by Zelda Williams, Robin Williams' daughter. This is the first thing I've seen of hers. I was pleasantly surprised at how well everything, um, flowed. Uh, again, written by Diablo Cody, uh, released February 9th, 2024. So here it is in late 2024 and I finally got my hands on it. So I'm a little late to the game. Sorry guys. Um, didn't quite make its budget back, but I, I mean, it had good reviews. So the budget was 13 million, it made 9.9 .9 million. It was almost there, guys, almost. So I think part of the post-COVID, um, people still haven't gotten back into the movie theaters quite like they used to. I also know the economy's tanked right now. So there's not a lot of extra money to go to the movies because Jesus, it's expensive nowadays. Even here in the Midwest, it's freaking expensive. I can't imagine y'all in uh, New York, Chicago, LA, San Francisco, your major metropolises. I, nope, I probably couldn't even afford a fucking latte in one of those towns, but I digress. Um, it's kind of a shame because I really wish this would have been considered a box office smash as well. It was a really, really fun, pleasant, nice film. Um, this is a period piece, so it's set in 1989. I was nine years old, so I totally remember a lot of the fashions, the home decor. This, I kind of felt like home for a minute. I know that sounds really weird, but... That's kind of, you know, the big hair, the Aquanet, Rave hairspray, the caboodles, the whole, oh God, there were so many things in these scenes I recognized. Okay, so 
we'll just get into the story. Um, so Lisa, Sw Lisa Swallows, that's the character's name. She's um, a teenager, starting her senior year of school. She's still struggling. Her mother was murdered in front of, well, not quite in front of her. Axe murderer broke into the house. She was hiding, trying to call 911, and her mother was murdered. Um, she's still struggling with this about two years later. And I know, you know, a lot of people would be, apparently she went selectively mute for six months afterwards. Her father, on the other hand, is your typical bungling 80s TV dad, who's very oblivious. He's already been remarried and she's got a stepmom, played by Carla, Carla Gugino, and a stepsister. Um, so Janet is the stepmom, Taffy. Oh my God, Taffy. And she is every inch the Taffy you imagine. Miss Hawaiian, Junior Hawaiian Tropic winner and cheerleader and yeah, fashion oriented. And Taffy kind of got on my nerves there for a few minutes. Um, but Lisa, on the other hand, Lisa is a kindred spirit. Lisa hangs out in an abandoned cemetery that is dedicated to bachelors who died. Uh, she's specifically enamored with this one grave that's got the, a bust of the um, occupant. <laughs> um, and uh, she goes there. She does wax rubbing. She's a writer. She does dark poetry. This girl is goth without looking goth, I guess. She's definitely what I would... She would be one of my creeplings, for sure. The girl seems like a very much of a kindred spirit. Um... I identify with her a lot, duh. So anyway, we get kind of a montage. The opening montage is this cute little animation that kind of gives you an idea of what the creature, Cole Sprouse's character, what uh, kind of an overview of his life until it ended. Um, it's, it's cute, pay attention to it. So we open with Lisa getting ready to go to a party with Taffy. Um, Taffy's like, Lisa's like, ugh, I don't know that I want to go. Taffy's like, hey, this is the first, I believe she calls it Rager of the Season. You, It's mandatory because, of course, she's popular. She has to go to all these things. Um, besides, your doctor told you you need to socialize more. So there is one good thing about Taffy. Even though Taff Taffy is very, seems very shallow and very vapid, she is kind of trying to look out for Lisa in a roundabout way. Um... She mentions to Lisa that the blush she's wearing doesn't suit her. Go use my tanning bed. Well, Lisa almost gets electrocuted by the tanning bed, so that thing's out. This plum comes into play later. Oh. So Lisa goes to the party. On the way to the party, Taffy's trying to make small talk. You know, are, are you, how do you like your new school? Are you crushing? She tells her she's got a crush on the guy who runs the literary magazine. Um, and... She starts talking about the uh, cemetery, and Taffy's like, okay, that's weird. So they get there. Of course, Taffy goes and does her party girl, popular girl shit. And Lisa runs into her crush. They have a little conversation, and she ends up taking a drink of something that is quite obviously spiked with something, and she ends up loopy to say the very least uh i believe the crush whose name is michael um so, said she went from pepsi free to pcp and it kind of yeah she's don't stumbling around taffy notices taffy goes to go yell at um michael and his friend who had whatever it was and she, lisa stumbles in she's saved by um Doug her lab partner Doug tries to take her away from the party to a back bedroom where she pukes Ugh. and he of course sexually harasses her he starts trying to feel her up and getting her to feel him up and it's just Doug's trying to be what well, you know was the good guy that wasn't really a good guy if it were me I probably would have slugged his ass um but one thing about Catherine Newton is she's a, a tiny little thing. She's a sprightly little, tiny little angelic being. 
And I'm built like a farm girl. And I learned to defend myself like a farm girl. So, you know, lab partner been doing that to me. I, he probably would have ended up with at least a black eye and more than likely a broken nose. So, but Lisa does what Lisa does and she runs away. She stumbles through, because even though they drove to the party, there it's actually within walking distance if you cut through the woods and the cemetery. Same time, there's this nasty ass storm brewing. Lisa stumbles home through the cemetery, gets home, smashes the bathroom mirror in a uh, fit of anger, and passes out in her bed. Well, during the storm, this huge ball of green lightning strikes the cemetery and it strikes the stone of her, of uh, the guy she's been, the, the stone she's been paying attention to. So, um, So the, this guy, his grave was struck by lightning. Okay. Next morning, we wake up to Janet being all pissy with Lisa because of the window. And Janet is one of these uptight, middle class, upper middle class moms. I am an intuitive person and how Lisa must be wanting attention and all this crap. You kind of want to smack the crap out of her. And Carla Gugino plays it so well. So we know there's issues between Janet and Lisa. Dad, of course, is your bumbling dad who's just kind of letting Janet take the reins when it comes to parenting. It's probably why he got married so quickly after, you know, the first wife was killed. Uh, that's just me spitballing. Don't quote me on that. Um... So, she tells Lisa, or they, they get to the point where Lisa has to um, pay for the window. And she's like, fine, I'll pick up an extra shift at work. She works at a dry cleaners, mending and doing things like that. So, the girl can sew. Again, comes in later. Um, she comes back from work after having an interaction with her crush again. And um, the whole family's like, we're going to go watch the late showing of Look Who's Talking. And Lisa's like, I just don't know. She's like, I'm tired. They, of course, ignored her for dinner because I guess Lisa doesn't eat meat or doesn't eat a lot of meat. And, of course, they got a meat lover's pizza and left one slice left covered in sausage for the poor girl. Um, so Lisa elects, she's like, I'm just, I'm tired from work. I just want to stay home. So they go to the movie. She's home by herself. Girls watching, um... Third Romero zombie movie, Day of the Dead. Like I said, me and Lisa could have hung out. Me and Lisa definitely could have hung out. She's home alone watching a zombie movie when something breaks into the house. Um, it is the gentleman from the grave. He was r resurrected by the lightning. And he there's a little, you know, terrorizing running around the house. Looks like a break-in. But Lisa finally... Um, recognizes who he is and um, she decides to hide him in her closet. Now, he's covered in crud, he smells, he's mute, and he looks like a mutilated body. Um, she teaches him how to use the shower and gets him dressed and I, I'm hoping it's some of her dad's clothes. Um, and... we go about it now the family comes home lisa claims that a burglar broke in and she fought them off and that explains the mess janet of course jumps to you're making it up for attention she threatens to send lisa to an asylum which is really funny because the, the you find out that janet is a psychiatric nurse you'd think she'd have more sympathy and try you know other things before going straight to jumping this girl in the loony bin so that tells me that Janet probably married Lisa's dad for status, money, companionship, something, and doesn't want Lisa in the picture. Um, so there's an altercation. Oh, wait, I jump ahead. While Lisa is at school the next day, 
The creature decides to take a little bit of revenge on Janet and coughs up a worm into her food. And she eats it. And she figures out she ate it. So she freaks the fuck out. Um, she corners Lisa after work or after school. Now, Janet was supposed to go to a conference in Milwaukee. Well, she says, no, I took a sick day. Or, um, I'm sick, so I'm not going because you, for somehow, she, some reason, she decided to jump to, even though Lisa wasn't home, the worm came from Lisa into the food. So she has confronted her in her bedroom and to just cut this the short, the creature kills her. And they harvest Janet's ear for the creature because he's missing body parts. He's missing an ear. He's missing his hand. A few other things, which we'll get into later. Um, so Lisa sews it on and they basically jump started to life with the tanning bed. <laughs> and um, every time they use this tanning bed to add a piece to him, he starts to look more human and less zombie-like. So, um, they decide to get him a hand. They're going to lure Doug to the cemetery and get rid of him and cut his hand off. And it works. So, Dougie, you got your punishment for, you know, doing what you did. Now, the creature was a pianist in his, in his former life. They bond now that he's able to use his hands and he, they bond over music and playing the piano and all that. So she doesn't play, but she, she's very much a music lover. Um, now the police, um, Taffy starts, starts, uh, Taffy figures out that her mom is missing because she wants to go call her at the hotel for some cheerleader accomplishment and they couldn't find her so now we have the police investing both Janet's and Doug's disappearances um they're pulling students in for questioning Taffy of course cuts class because oh my god I'm already PMSing and now this with my mom and all this I can't handle it oh my god again not something <laughs> excuse me not something that I'm happy to hear, but it, it, play, it plays well with the character. Now, one thing that does start happening once Lisa and the creature start bonding, she starts becoming, like, visually more outgoing, more makeup, more goth-style clothing, all kinds of stuff. Um, she's slowly becoming, coming out of the cocoon, coming out, out of her, her shell, so to speak. Um... They're pulling students in for questioning. Lisa gets pulled in. Apparently she's been implicated. She refuses to cooperate. Um, Lisa notices that during this one history class that her crush had skipped. She gets it into her head that she's not afraid. That She has this conversation with the creature earlier that she's not afraid to die. But she doesn't want to die a virgin. She's got it in her head. She's going to give it to um Michael. So she skips. Now, while they're at she's at school doing all this, the creatures are, he has free reign of the house when no one's there. So he's sitting at the piano when he hears the answering machine go off and it's dad calling to see if Janet had returned because they found her car over on a couple streets over. So he finds the car. Apparently he has figured out the basics of driving. After murdering one of the neighbors who comes over to threaten him, he uh, takes the car. He finds Lisa, who has left the, the school to go find Mike and give herself up. Now, she gets the creature to take her to Michael's house. She just swans right into Michael's house, right up to his bedroom, and notices through the crack in the door that Taffy has been sleeping with her crush. Yay! Sisters share everything, apparently, Taffy, including boyfriends. 
Um, she confronts them and the creature runs in and kills Michael and takes his um, little Mikey. <laughs> he cuts his penis off because apparently that's another one of the parts he didn't have. Um, Lisa manages to keep, keep him from killing Taffy. She's kind of now hysterical and catatonic. Not catatonic, but she keeps going between being very acting almost catatonic to being very hysterical, which again is a really um, acceptable way to behave. Uh, so Lisa chases after because he, the creature, took Michael's body part and headed back to his grave. And Lisa follows him in the car. She apologizes to Taffy. She's like, hey, you're the only person who ever tried with me, and I'm sorry. Um, you know, you are my sister. Gives her, her her mom's rosary, which is a very symbolic thing to her. Goes running after the creature. Taffy now goes and wanders off and does the... Um, the kind of what I call the dead girl walk. We were in a daze and the whole... Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting into minutia here. She confronts, Lisa confronts the creature and he basically admits without saying words that he's in love with her. And she realizes that she's been falling in love with him. And she's like, you know, make love to me. And he's like, I can't. And that's when, you know, they figure out why he took Mikey's Mikey. And she sews it on. They electrocute him through the tanning bed and she loses her virginity. She realizes, though, that she's going to be caught. So, uh, she convinces the creature to electrocute her in the tanning bed to avoid being arrested. He does it, lets her burn to death, but not before she had given him a note which said, you know, death is only temporary, I love you forever. We cut to the end with uh, Dad, Dale, and Taffy visiting Lisa's grave, having a little chit-chat. Um, Taffy is kind of disturbed to discover that on the grave someone had written Beloved Wife. And as we pan out from them to a um, another part of the park, we see the creature sitting on a bench who now looks very, very human. He can talk. He's reciting... He's reading poetry. Um, it's uh, Percy Shelley's poem, O Mary Dear, where a resurrected Lisa lies in his lap and she she's basically enjoying herself. This was a fun movie. This I actually liked a lot better than Jennifer's Body. I think Diablo Cody had kind of gotten out of her... I don't know um, I, if y'all remember. I was talking about how in Jennifer's body, she tried to write to be very quippy and try to create like her own slang and everything. The 80s was the decade of weird, of slang, like to the max, grody, gag me with the spoon. And then Heather's, the the black comedy movie, went and did did this the same way. They, they went and added their own vernacular, uh, you know, so very and things like that, which actually ended up in popular culture slang. The quippiness works here because that's how the 80s was. Um, and I feel like her characters are more rounded in this one. I mean, I'm not going to say I don't like Diablo Cody, but you're not going to sell me a movie just because she wrote it. But this was a pleasant surprise. I half expected not to like the writing. But again, I was very pleasantly surprised. This is not an extremely gory movie. This is more of a horror comedy. This would kind of go into, oh, what's the zombie movie with Nicholas Holt? I think it's R. I'm not sure. Um, it kind of, and Lisa's, or not Lisa's body, Jennifer's body. It's kind of like that. Um, I still highly enjoyed it. So if you, if you want kind of a, if you don't want to go full on, um, Valentine's Day slasher films with My Bloody Valentine, 
you would still want to kind of enjoy a creepy little movie with your with your uh, with your SO, your little boo there. This would be a good one. I might actually make my husband watch this on Valentine's Day with me because it's so cute. So yeah, I uh, highly recommend this one. It really good for teenagers. There, there's no real bad language. There's no nudity. The gore factor is very low. Um, I don't even remember what this was rated. Did I have a note on what it was rated? I probably should start making a note on what these are rated because I feel like this might have been a PG-13, but it was still so adorable. I don't say that much about horror movies, and if I do, it's usually ironic. But this really was truly cute and adorable, and I'm definitely putting this in my rotation of um, dark romances. So, Lisa Frankenstein from 2024, written by Diablo Cody, directed by um, Zelda Williams, and starring Katherine Newton and Cole Sprouse is definitely a recommend. So, on that note, I, I just really kind of want to watch some more stuff now. So, I'm going to just say... Good night, my creeplings, and I'll see you next time. Bye.